Good afternoon and welcome to Design Master Training. My name is David Robison. Today we are going to be looking at wire lengths in Revit. If you're attending the training live, you can ask questions in the chat box. If you're watching the recording of the training, you can call or email your questions. Our phone number is 866-516-9497, and our email address is support at designmaster.biz. So we will go ahead and get started. Again, today we are going to be looking at feeder lengths and circuit lengths in Revit and how those calculations work in Design Master Electrical. I'm going to go ahead and go to our power plan. Uh, and so we've got some panels that are inserted in this project. So we'll run the panel edit command. And when we do that, it will list all of our uh, panels. If we select, select a panel and scroll down to the feeder section, there is a whole section down at the bottom related to length. So we're essentially going to be looking at all of this and how all of these uh, settings work for figuring out the lengths of your feeders. For the length, we have a number of different options that you can see here. We've got the straight line, right angles, Revit calculated length, and fixed. We also have the default value. The default comes from the options. So I'm going to take a moment and go take a look at that, and then we'll talk about what all these different uh, settings do. But if we exit out of that and we go to options, in the general section, we have the feeder length calculation method, which is that default that we were looking at there. And then we have another number of other options. We have the branch circuit calculation method, the building angle, the feeder wire uh, makeup, and the branch circuit wire makeup length. Finally, the uh, add branch circuit wire makeup. So we're going to be looking at all of these settings in the panel edit and in the circuit edit command. There's always going to be a default. The default is set here in options. This is what the software is going to choose if you don't make any sort of specific choice for a project, uh, for a, something in your project. The idea being that most things in your project are going to have the same settings. So you set this up in your options. That's the default that's going to be used and then you override it in specific instances where you want to adjust it. So for this feeder length calculation method, we have uh, the three options that are calculation methods. So you can choose which one's gonna be the default calculation, and then at the specific feeder, you can override that. Now, same for the other settings. So everywhere we look at options and we look at the default, it's gonna point back to this options dialog. So that's where the defaults are being set. Going back to our panel, Looking at this switchboard, in the feeder section under the length, we have the default. Again, that is coming from the options. And then we have four different calculation methods. The first is straight line. And what this is going to do is it's going to calculate the distance based upon where the panels are in the project. Uh, I'm actually going to take LP1. So we've got LP1, and it is fed from MDP1. So if we highlight this panel, LP1 is right here. And if we do the same thing and find MDP1, it's down here. So we've got our MDP1 down here. LP1 is over here. So we are going to use those locations in the model to calculate the lengths. And then the question is, OK, how do we actually calculate that length? We can do a straight line calculation. And what that's going to do is do a line directly between these two panels. So if I draw a detail line in, it would be essentially this line. So we, that would be the line, and that would be the length. So that's the straight line in the x and the y direction. And then if there's any elevation change, we will see that distant difference in the z, and we'll add that. So if they're on different floors, we will account for that. If they're on the same floor, we'll see the same elevation. And so the elevation change will effectively be zero. We have some ways to account for going up to the ceiling that we'll look at in a moment. But just know that we'll do the x, y, and then the z. So if there's any uh, change in elevation, we'll pick that up if we're on different floors. That's the straight line. We also have right angles. And what this is going to do is it's going to go along the axes of the building. So along like this, and then up here like this. And obviously, that would you know, match to where that actual panel is, something like that. So that would be the calculation that we're doing over and then up. 
you'll see this in just a moment, we also have a building angle. So this assumes the uh, building is at angle zero, and so we'll do zero and 90. We can adjust that, and instead of doing zero and 90, uh, we're still gonna have right angles, but we can have it be at a different rotated angle. So if you were at some uh, part of the building that was rotated, you could have it come uh, at an angle like this, and then 90 degrees from that. So you'd have a calculation that's at that angle. So for the right angles, we can define what that zero angle is. So to do all of that, I'll get rid of my drafting lines just so that they're not there. In the panel edit, looking at LP1, for the length, we have the default, and so it's using right angles by default. And so that's the, uh, the XY. If you're using the default, the building angle is also gonna be pulled from the options and give you the default value. If you specify, I'm gonna do right angles in the pull down, you can then for this specific feeder, set a different angle. So we could adjust the angle and say, I set this at 20 degrees. Our length is gonna change from 195 to 185. So it's slightly shorter because of the, the adjustment on the angle. So you can adjust your building angle on a per feeder basis if you want to. You can also specify for this specific feeder, I want it to be a straight line. And then we'll get 142 feet. So those are the two uh, design master calculations for your length. We also have the Revit calculated length. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna pull the circuit path length. In this case, it's 187 feet. What that is, is if we go here and we select this panel and we go to the circuit, we can do edit path and Revit will draw on this blue line, the path that it thinks this feeder is gonna take. If we go to the 3D view, you can see that it's going up a little bit and then over and it's apparently coming from the bottom. So you have a very clear view of what it's doing for the path. And this is exactly the path that it's using for the Revit calculated length. You can also adjust this. So if you have a specific path that you want that feeder to run, you can adjust this path and then it'll calculate the length. So say we come here and this is essentially a flat line at this point, we can insert some control points and say it needs to go you know, up and back down. This is obviously uh, not a, a great example of how the feeder would run, but if you need to make an adjustment, something like this, you can trace it out exactly like that. Uh, and so it's gonna follow exactly where you want that to be. So it will, it will trace that exactly. So if you make any changes to this, uh, you can obviously in the elevation, you can make changes in the elevation. Here we can make changes horizontal. We could add more control points and we could make it go like this. This is actually totally outside of the building, so it's probably not going like this, but something like that. So you can trace out the path. And then when you are done, when you run the panel edit, we're going to use that for the length. So if we do this LP1, it is now 239 feet, which is bigger than the 180 that it was calculating before. The last option is fixed. So you can select this and you can type in a number. This is where I know exactly how long this feeder is. I want this to be 250 feet. Or my panels aren't necessarily in their electrical rooms. Uh, and so I don't, I know these lengths are wrong. So I'm just going to tell you what the length is. So wh whatever reason you have, if you just want to tell us the length, you type it in here and that will be used as the length for the feeder. For the straight line and the right angles, and also for the default, if you have these, we also have the wire makeup. Again, this has a default value set in options. So if you need to change with the default, you go to options and you can change it there. The default for this project is 10, but we can set it to a custom value. This is additional length that's going to add to the value that we calculate. So this is how you can account for it to going up to the ceiling, for example. Uh, you know, in this case, it's just kind of going up to a low ceiling and back down, maybe an extra 10 feet is enough. Say you're in a warehouse and it's got 40 foot ceiling. So you have to go 40 feet up, got to go across the warehouse and then 40 feet down. So you've got an extra 80 feet. You could account for that here and that'll just add that directly onto the calculated value. Uh, so that's just an option you have to add some additional length for whatever purposes that you have separate from the value that's being calculated. That's available when you're doing our calculations. If you're doing the Revit calculated length, we're not gonna account, we don't give you that option. We're just using exactly what Revit tells us. If we're doing a fixed length, we also don't let you type it in there, just account for it in the fixed length that you give us. So that's available for the calculated lengths. 
And also for these calculated lengths, they are again being pulled from the project. So with a straight line, it's 212 feet. If we move this panel in the project, it's going to adjust that length. So if I move that from that wall over to here, it's a little bit closer. And that length went up from 212 to 198. So moving the panel, it will adjust the calculated value. And then these lengths obviously are used for our fault calc and our voltage drop and our arc flash calculations. So these lengths then drive the calculations that we're doing. But today we're just talking about just the lengths and then we can talk about the calculations and other trainings, but this is talking about just the lengths, but this will then drive those calcs. Uh, so those are the options that we have for feeders. And so a feeder is fairly straightforward because you have a very definite start and a very definite end. Circuits are a little bit uh, trickier. So we'll pull up our circuit edit because for a circuit, you could have multiple pieces on the circuit. So I'm gonna go to PP1B. I've got a receptacle circuit here. If I highlight this circuit, it's all these receptacles here. So the question is when doing a calculation, what actually is our length? Uh, and this mostly is being used for voltage drop. It's also for, we calculate fault out to devices, but generally you're, you're more interested in voltage drop on these devices. And you have to figure out what that length is going to be, because not only do you have the length going out to all of these uh, devices, but the load is changing as well. So on this first run, the, the home run, it has the full load. But then this next run has a little bit less load because there's fewer receptacles. And then this next run, there's fewer load. And then this run here, we've actually dropped off all of these receptacles because it kind of branched as drawn. Who knows if the, con the contractor is going to build it this way or not. So figuring out a voltage drop or a fault calc on the branch circuit is a little bit complicated because there's actually multiple nodes happening. For our calculations, when we calculate that value, we are calculating the average distance. So we have the circuit length, again, all of the same options that we had before. When we're doing our calculations, this 20 feet, that's the average distance to the devices on that circuit. So on average, it's 20 feet. And if you have most of your devices the same direction away from the panel, this kind of works out. It's close enough for a back of the envelope voltage drop calculation uh, or for a fault calculation that particularly for fault, you're like looking at a single device. If you have a single device on a branch circuit, it's going to be absolutely correct because there's only one device there. It's when you have multiple devices, it starts to, to be not as accurate and not taking into account those other where the actual layout. So just bear in mind, that's what we are calculating is the average distance. Uh, and then so we're going to take a look at what that ends up meaning for the calculations in just one moment. And again, you have all of the same options. You've got your building angle, you've got your wire makeup. You also have the additional add wire makeup for each device. This is whether that additional length is added just once or for each device. And so for each device adds it more. So if you're going up to the ceiling and then back down for each device, that's gonna have a different impact than if you're just going up and down once. So uh, we just have the option there for what that's gonna do. So if we have our wire makeup and we set that to five feet, that's going to be just five feet because we're not doing for each device. It just adds five. So it went from 19 up to 24. If we change this to yes, it's now going to account for the up and down to each receptacle. And there's quite a few. So we're going up and down. So each receptacle is a little bit farther away. So that ends up being significantly farther. So now it's 64 feet. Uh, so just be aware that's what that uh, does. And, and there's different ways you can account for the lengths. For the uh, Revit calculated length, that's again based upon the circuit path. So if I select one of these receptacles, go to the electrical circuit, and I go to edit path, this is blue line is the path that Revit is calculating. So when Revit gives you these crazy distances, this is why, because it goes up to here and then it kind of loops back around itself. So that's the distance that it's using when it's calculating that value. And so it's using this entire length. So it's essentially putting the whole load at the very end of the run. Uh, which is not necessarily the most accurate way to do like a voltage drop calculation. So you just have to put your engineering hat on and figure out how you want to do this calculation. The calculation for that wire length is, again, we're calculating the average distance. 
And so that has some impacts on what that calculated value ends up being and how that impacts what the final like voltage drop values are. So we have this uh, knowledge base article. We'll have it linked in the notes if you're watching the uh, watching a recording. Uh, anyone watching this live, I put it in the chat there. You can pull it up if you want to look at this again. But we'll walk through this because this walks through how that average distance ends up impacting these calculations. So we first have a single device. So we've got a panel and a receptacle. Uh, we've got the, the assumptions here. It doesn't really matter uh, other than this is 100 feet and we have 0.26% uh, voltage drop. However we got there, that's just that's what we have. So if we take that receptacle and then we put two more the same distance away from each other, we have 0.26% voltage drop here on this first run because there's only one receptacle. It ends up being doubled for this middle run and tripled for this last one. And then you add all three of those together to get your total voltage drop. So if they're all in a straight line, the voltage drop is 1.56%. So that is what you end up with for your voltage drop if you have three receptacles in a straight line, if you do a, a very complete calculation. Design Master is calculating an average distance. So if we take the entire load and put it at the average distance, which is at this middle receptacle, it ends up being the same value. So it's 0.54 kVA, 200 feet, and it ends up being 1.56%. So in this case, it's exactly the same. So we get the right value. When we start having it not be a straight line, that's where you start to have our value and the, the precisely calculated one being a little bit different. So we put them at right angles. So again, the same distances, but they're at right angles. Uh, if you calculate it using a full calculation method, again, you're going to have the exact same voltage drop because the lengths haven't changed at all. In Design Master, you are going to get a different value because now the length to this receptacle, rather than 300 feet, is 223 feet. So the average length, instead of being 200 feet, the average distance to all these receptacles now is 174, which is what we're documenting here. So the voltage drop that Design Master is going to calculate is 1.37%. So it's a little bit lower than what the, the true voltage drop would be. So you just need to take this into account, realize we're probably going to give you values that are a little bit on the low side. So if it's something that's closer, you need a very accurate calculation, you might need to, to account for that and, and do some hand calcs for that specific circuit. So that was a, a, a case where it's still pretty close. We also have examples where you start to do loops or other more interesting and more complicated layouts. This happens a lot with uh, site lighting, where maybe you have a panel in the middle of the building and then you've got site lighting all around it. That voltage drop is gonna be wildly different. So here again, we have 100 feet between each of these receptacles, but they're essentially doing this loop around the panel. If you did the calculation by hand, accounting for everything, the drop in load, you'll still get that 1.56 because the lengths haven't changed. In Design Master, this panel, this receptacle is now 100 feet from the panel, even though it's 300 feet of circuit length. This one's 76 feet. You average the, the panel, the, yeah, the uh, lengths to all the devices, and you get an average length of 92 feet. And so the voltage drop ends up being 0.72% which again is uh, now is significantly less, less than that 1.56. So in cases like this, you need to make, you need to be more aware and make your adjustments. This is a place where the Revit's calculated length does come in handy because again, if you're using that calculated length that Revit has, you can trace out the path that you wanna use. So this would be a place where you wanna take your, your path, you actually wanna trace that out and say, okay, I want my whole load to be this far away, trace a path, and then, then do the calculation and maybe trace it to the, to the middle of where the, the, pan, the light fixtures are because we put the whole load at the, the length. So you don't necessarily want to trace to the farthest light fixture because that doesn't have the whole load at that point. So you'll need to, to have some uh, adjustments and account for that. So that is what we do for calculating the distances to the branch circuit devices. Uh, and that is everything I have to share about calculating feeder lengths and circuit lengths. If there are any questions, you can go ahead and ask them. You can either come online with your, on your microphone or you can put them in the chat. I'll be happy to answer them. Any questions you have about circuit lengths or anything related to Design Master Electrical. So if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, share them. And I'll be happy to answer them for you. 
Thank you for watching today's Design Master Training. Contact us with questions or comments by calling 866-516-9497 or emailing support at designmaster.biz. See you next month.